to the action of carrying out the works of Jesus. And of course, the whole idea behind this too is that the Antichrist is the name of the Antichrist and it's a man. It is something that is opposite to the real. The only problem is the name Jesus is not a man. January 11th, And the name Jesus is not what's given to the beast itself. The beast has a mark and there is, you could have the mark or the name or the number of his name. Since the word blasphemous name. And that's what I want to get to. It's around 2040 uh, that we're going to get into this. But we're going to, so we're going to play this at 2003 so you can kind of catch the thought that he's saying here before we go into this part about the blasphemous name. Let's listen into this. Telling us. See, this is the way the new world order is going to be. People are going to start telling the truth. If they have a script, they're going to let you know that they're reading it. If they're on the news cast, they're going to periodically show what they're reading, and they're going to they're going to let you know that they're not pretending to not read. That's the transformation here. Everybody's going to start telling the freaking truth. And if you're reading something, just let them know you're reading. His direction. You're watching Israeli News Live. Israel's Channel 7 is reporting about uh, uh, the Israeli military striking the uh, what they call the, uh, the Iranian uh, uh, special troops inside of Iraq or uh, Iranian proxies, but it's actually the, uh, this is the uh, Iraqi popular uh, forces that were struck by the Israelis there on the border with Syria and Iraq. Uh, the United States and both uh, Israel are working to try to thin out uh, or to cause more havoc there in the region. And this situation is going to end up spiraling out, out of control. I'm very much concerned about that. And um, I know that uh, we had shared with you in one of our releases uh, earlier today that um, we had gotten intel coming out uh, right there on the border with Iraq and uh, Syria that uh, the U.S., of course, had a base that they built right there on the border. And that base there is being used to try to keep uh, Iraqi soldiers from assisting President Bashar al-Assad in overthrowing the ISIS uh, and al-Qaeda al-Nusra fighters that are in this, this region of the world. Uh, sometime tomorrow but listen i was getting ready for news today we're dealing with the indictment of uh, netanyahu prime minister netanyahu and uh, of course i know some people probably think like him like trump another witch hunt but it's not i mean in fact if you look at the facts as we shared them on israeli news live um case one or case 200 there are very serious charges against him and it involves with the telecommunication giants bezik as well as uh, one of the newspapers, one of the larger newspapers there in Israel, getting favorable coverages in exchange. Uh, there was a quid pro quo pro involved in this. Uh, he would make sure the favors were given so that they would uh, have favorable coverage. I, I personally do not like Bezik. I lived in Israel. We did have Bezik uh, as a provider at one time. And uh, you can always tell where the eyes are going. They're going to the teleprompter. Uh, it's quite interesting, the story I had with them. But nonetheless, that's a different story altogether. It doesn't really matter. Is it's really close to the camera. Uh, you know, uh, but, uh, but to, to, to get into the issue here, uh, there are some very serious charges, and it does amount into the millions of dollars uh, that uh, Bezik, especially in the case of Bezik, that they got rewarded uh, for making sure that Netanyahu got favorable coverage. Just notice how you're being looked at. But the I was eyes are coming gonna... back to the camera hole, but it's also going to his right and then down here. There's two of them.
do this as a message combined together. And then I began to realize this really has nothing to do with Netanyahu. So I said, no. I even said it while we were on live. I said, can't do that because it's a completely different story altogether. And what if they're on the news, Cash, they're going to periodically show what they're reading and they're going to they're gonna let you know that they're not pretending to not read. So since then, I have waited till I heard from my own sources uh, about this. Uh, my Middle East source was able to confirm, as the president did say to the nation, that were, there were no American casualties. Probably the only difference is, as my own source said, that was the deliberate intent of the Iranian government. That there would be no American casualties. And the reason for that, according to the Middle East source that I have, was to try to diffuse the situation to appease the Iranian people, but yet not for this to go any further. What most of us around the world do not know is that there was a message sent with this strike by the Iranian government. It's a message that the U.S. military, the U.S. government knows. It's a message that many in the intelligence world around the world know. Israel would know this. Russia will know this. The Iranians will know this message. He's not trying to look into the camera purposely. He's just going from left prompt to right prompt. But unfortunately, the American public does not know. And that's what I want to address today. And then he looked at the camera right there. <laughs> I'm first going to play just a few minutes. And that's what I want. Israel would know this. Russia will know this. The Iranians will know this message. But unfortunately, the American public does not know. And that's what I want to address today. The new world order is going to be. People are going to start telling the truth. If they have a script, they're going to let you know that they're reading it. Uh, you know, and it's kind of interesting. I know that there's been a lot of uh, new pictures coming out painting uh, uh, General Soleimani as, as, uh, even so far as to saying that he was part of the mastermind of taking down the Twin Towers on 9 11. I understand. I understand who Soleimani really represents. And I understand the paintings, the paintings that are coming about, and who's responsible for the first 9-11 and the second 9-11. Do you realize how absurd that is? Ain't it? I wonder if anybody really knows that the United States government, the U.S. military, worked with General Soleimani as the head of the Quds forces in order to overthrow the Taliban in Afghanistan. I bet you there is somebody out there that knows that the government has given power to that specific person that the dragon has given us this delusion that he's going through right now. Yeah, it's actually General Soleimani that they worked with. Kasim Soleimani was their direct man uh, with the Iranian government that was giving all the actions, all the information to successfully overthrow the Taliban in Afghanistan, step by step. And the United States military followed that step by step. And he was a number one ally for U.S. forces in overthrowing the Taliban in Afghanistan. Of course, we're still bogged down over there. And, and what really changed all this is when President Bush decided to call Iran the axis of evil and then turned on the very ally that the United States had in fighting in Afghanistan and instead uh, labeled them as the axis of evil, which the Khomeini at that time, which I know. Uh, just to give you some ideas here, we have John Hagee here. Uh, of course, I think this foreign minister of Israel meeting with uh, Netanyahu here. Just different pictures on here. Not every picture applies as I'm showing you some of these things. But uh, uh, he meets also, I think, with President Trump. Yeah, President Trump right there uh, over there to the other side of the screen there. And, uh, and of course, the, remember the, the, the 
U.S. Embassy being moved to uh, Jerusalem, and uh, how that he was the man they, they honored to do the prayers there. But of course, if you notice, never a mention of the name of Jesus Christ, right? Very good friends with Netanyahu as well, the very guy that's accused of bribery. Now, of course, it's an indictment. It doesn't mean that he's guilty, mind you, but, you know, nonetheless, that's just to throw that out there. Uh, the mania of Orthodox rabbis, and, and of course, Yitzhak Shapira, he is uh, a, a Jewish man, uh, very much like myself, has a Jewish ancestry. Uh, I, I think he lives in Israel or lived in Israel, something of that effect. I could be wrong on that. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, he is working on taking the, the believers, the Christians in South America... play just a few minutes of what the president had to say and I want to listen to his words I realize that his message is two purpose one there is an admission in his message that most overlook but at the same time there's also and what will appear to the American people is that the President of the United States made a great military commander in showing restraint and not doing a counter-retaliation on the Iranian regime. One way or the other. Of course, President Trump denies that emphatically. And you may be very close to President Trump. You may love him, appreciate him as a politician, thinking that he is the most honest man and sincere man out there. And some people even accuse me as to say, well, Steve, you would have rather had Hillary Clinton as president. No, I certainly would not. And I don't know, personally, if I looked at all the candidates we have now, I don't know of any candidate, Democrat or Republican, that is not compromised. Even Tulsi Gabbard, I've had a lot of respect for some of the things that she has said, but I've also watched some of the things she's done in her actions, and I realize she's also compromised. So no candidate in the Democrat or Republican arena is probably worth a flip. Obviously, the, the goal is, he's really good at reading anyway, but the goal is to turn from side to side and keep your eyes from being known that, that you're reading. guy's not a good guy, period. But nonetheless, uh, Khomeini said to his own people, said to even General Soleimani, that we will be next. Of course, he had a little help from General Wesley Clark letting him know the play plan of the U.S., and that was to overthrow the seven nations in five years, which included Iran, and Iran would be last. But nonetheless, they've known it. And this is why General Soleimani then was put uh, in charge of trying to thwart U.S. Uh, uh, advances inside of Iraq. So yes, he did have American blood on his hands when it comes to that issue there, but then again, we went into Iraq on a completely false pretense altogether. Now that we find out what the technology is, at least we don't know directly, but we know that uh, when we were when it was told to us that the uh, Iranians have, uh, you know, a technology, but from the Chinese that we cannot mitigate, we realize what that is. They can actually fire missiles at U.S. forces indiscriminately there, and we cannot track it. We cannot shoot those missiles down. They have shown this, as we shared with you the other day from our older footage there. We shared with you how did they give this technology to the Houthi rebels that were fighting. They were able to take out, uh, hit oil refineries inside of Saudi Arabia and totally could not be detected whatsoever. Now they've proven themselves once again to be able to take out and hit the American bases inside of Iraq uh, totally unimpeded. How refreshing is this? He's not trying to look at the camera. He's just, he's reading the teleprompter, but it's, it's the information. I don't feel like he's lying at all. And, he, you know, of course, everybody is holding some information, but it's necessary to hold until it's time for everybody to know. But he's not. It, it's like it's it's just more efficient. There's less ums and ends and uh, and let me sees and all that. And, and the timing of the video in all likelihood went from about 25 minutes to 17 minutes by doing this. Now, what kind of reaction can we do? Well, the United States does have its, uh, at its capabilities 
uh, a very powerful nuclear arsenal that it could use. Uh, they also had the ability to use what we call bunker busters or tactical nukes. And that may be the very card that the United States ends up playing. But the problem is, we hear the president talk about that we have in, uh, in the works right now these supersonic missiles as well, but we do not really have those missiles as of yet. We can only say that we have it in the works. In the works doesn't mean that they're coming out next week or next month. It might be next year or next... But the day comes that we have to make a decision on our own hearts. Are we going to continue to adore and exonerate men or women on the earth as some kind of great rulers of the world, are we ever going to truly lift up Jesus Christ? He's the one that will never fail you. He's the one that will not be found with his hands dirty in behind the scenes of politics. But many people have turned President Trump into an icon. They've made him an idol. He has got like a rock star status. Next couple of years down the road. Problem is the Chinese and the Russians already have it. And once they begin to lob theirs our way, if we can't stop Iranian missiles because of some type of technology that the Iranians got from the Chinese that we can't mitigate, and that's not supersonic missiles, which, by, oh, by the way, yes, I did remember because I actually shared with the Israeli Knesset uh, when I'd gotten the intelligence, uh, oh, I don't know, about eight months ago that the... Uh, uh, eight? Actually, it was... Uh, the technology was given to Hezbollah, or at least I believe that it was given to Hezbollah in order to be able to use not a hypersonic missile, but close to a hypersonic missile, a missile that could not be stopped by any of the Israeli type. Now, I'm also picking up one. This is only the second video that I've ever seen Steve do with letting us know that he's reading a script. And, but at the same time, the, the old habit of moving the head back and forth and shifting the eyes is still I see him catching himself doing it and it just to me it's 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 natural to see your eyes looking at what you're reading instead of looking directly in the camera and then looking off and then looking to the left and looking to the right that's what everybody does when they're when they're reading now he's so good at reading that at times I thought he was wearing an earpiece and that's that's but that's where Christopher Green and those that that's where they come in at. They are, yeah. I mean, they do both. They, they you know you should be able to learn. You should know how to read and list, regurgitate your own words too. But this is directly after. It's directly after this. Read, and I'll still tell you that I'm reading. I mean. Uh, <clears throat> I'll let you know. See, this is the way the new world order is going to be. So whoever's People on board. are going to start telling the truth. If they have a script, they're going to let you know that they're reading it. If they're on the newscast, they're going to periodically show what they're reading, and they're going to they're going to let you know that they're not pretending to not read. That's the transformation here. Everybody's going to start telling the freaking truth. And if you're reading something... Just let them know you're reading. It just eliminates the disgust when you're looking at people and they're pretending that they're just somebody else and they're not. Let me say, I was a little fired up. I'm not saying this, that Steve's get disgusted me. I, I was referring to AMTV I specifically. I should have said specifically AMTV, Christopher Green, and Chad Booksand because of the fakery, the fakeness of them. Because not only are they reading scripts and listening to earpieces, but they're fake and they're lying their asses off. I don't sense lies coming from Steve. I just understand that when you're in the CIA from before, you're always going to be in the CIA. And it's a comforting feeling to know that somebody's on your side that's in a, a high profile, a high position, a high powered place to be in because... The words that comes from his mouth and the people that he knows 
it, that's the connections. I always knew that there was a there was different types of people in the CIA, but I thought beforehand. So no, I didn't always know. I thought everybody was corrupt, and then I started to realize that not everybody is. And then, of course, you know that, that Justin helped me understand those things about the way the CIA works with people and his family being in the CIA. And who knows? I mean, he could be in there too. I won't truly know, but I don't believe so. I just think that when you're when you're around family members, you don't have to be. You don't have to do their job on payroll in order to do their job. Like you can do their job better than them without getting paid because you care more than them about the circumstances. So right now, I mean, it can't be any more clear. B4 is shifting the head, the eyes moving back and forth, slowing down the, the talking, trying to Make it look like you're not reading as much. Maybe tonight it might help you to open your eyes. And I think as Americans, we really need to seriously consider. After January 8th. January 8th is the turning point. I caught this on the 8th. The 8th. This is the first video of Steve coming clean. That it's not it's not like it's something and he's not doing it in a way like where he, people are even gonna notice. Only the eyes that can see are gonna notice. I know this from my own experience uh, and how that was taught there. So let's take a look at what was really going on here because they got a point. I mean, look, the, 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 the proof is in the pudding of the video. Please. So let's take a look at what was really going on here because they got a point. I mean, look, the, 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 the proof is in the pudding of the video. To hear this here, the Iranian Revolutionary uh, Guard Aerospace Force says Iran chose not to kill U.S. soldiers to avenge Soleimani. Claimed dozens of injured American troops were evacuated via Israel and Jordan. Uh, and this is something that the Iranians have claimed. I, I was aware of this from the very beginning. My own Middle East source says he does not believe that it was true that there were uh, U.S. Uh, casualties as far as deaths. He said there may have been some that were wounded. But they claim that there were, I think, 80 that were, uh, that were killed, and uh, there were some uh, over 200, I think, that were injured, is what the Iranians are saying that happened. But they did... See, when you can, when you know that he's reading, well, there's no, there's no fakery there. There's, there's no feeling of they're trying to make you think something else, because he's directly reading... And you can say, yeah, well, he always does that. No, what? Oh, yeah, what? Right. Right, right. Say they could have killed as many between the four to 5,000 American uh, troops there in the region. That was according to Rand Spars News Agency that had stated that. And the Times of Israel is actually reporting this. Uh, so the question is, did that actually happen? Were there any U.S. Uh, deaths in this? I don't know. The Iranians could also... Even though they chose not to to try to target life in this area, they could have said that you know there were American lives lost only to try to save face back home. Uh, but nonetheless, the fact of the the true fact of the matter remains is that their technology allowed those missiles to land on U.S. bases there in the Middle East, and we didn't shoot down any of them. So, I don't care what excuse uh, the American politicians want to give us. Uh, we're putting our soldiers at risk in a way that needs to come to an end. Also, there was a report... See, even just saying that, I don't care what that's... That's in the script. ...that came out on... Uh, this is on the Daily Mail. U.S. tried and failed to kill another top Iranian military official in Yemen. On the same night, the missile strike killed Qasami Soleimani, an Iraq official said... But I want you to realize just how sinister this is. 
I'll start off tonight before we go into the PowerPoint presentation that I have. And by the way, my PowerPoint presentation, even though I have hundreds of documents here, is based only on a very small, limited group of these documents. I will go back all the way to 2007. Uh, I will also go forward all the way to 2019. But I will only be dealing with certain areas. But I am very concerned, friends, that is very far from the truth. It was a very wise decision, though, that we did not carry out a larger attack and a retaliation. I agree with that. I have heard, and I have not confirmed it, I, maybe it's already on the news that the president is talking about... He does about it just enough, just enough to let you know. Iraq. And not that much to be... I think after what I share with you tonight, like, you'll understand why. Overwhelmingly different. It is in the interest... And if it's not being stated already, it would be in the interest of our, the safety of our troops to remove them from Iraq. Because granted, if this situation gets out of control, we don't need our troops, our men and women, sitting right there in the middle of this. I shared with you the, yesterday, the Chinese had met with the Iraqis and offered their military support. Of course, it was kind of disguised underneath the Silk Road Initiative. I shared with you that the Russian president immediately flew to Syria. All of this going on at a time when it looked like that Iran and the United States could end up in an all-out war. And I'm not saying that that's not going to end up going that direction eventually. It may very well go. Long time ago. So that his whole career he's been... He's just been a professional broadcaster, newscaster. Actually says that they did it with the intention to take both of them. And that's exactly what they're going to do. So anyway, will they actually be considered a terrorist, the two witnesses? Yes, because they are going to interrupt nature like no other people have ever done before. You know, 35 is when that destruction comes. Uh, or when they, or let me put it this way, Ezekiel 35 tells us exactly when God is going to destroy, uh, when God will actually destroy Rome. You might think, wow, that's pretty wild, brother. I didn't, I didn't know we knew when this was going to happen. Sure we do. Um, happen. Sure we do. Happen. Sure we do. Um, let me get to the right chapter, though. I'm not even in the right chapter as of yet, chapter 35, we'll drop down to verse 14 here, thus saith the Lord God, when the whole earth rejoices, I will make thee Second desolate, he's talking about Adam, remember Adam is wrong, Click. in this short broadcast, we don't have time to go into that, all of that, but he destroys Rome when the whole earth rejoices, when does the whole earth rejoice, Second 9-11, according to Revelation 11, Second. And just for those that want to look it up for yourself later, Revelation 11, 10, verse 10. The earth rejoices when the two witnesses are laying dead in the street. That's when the whole earth rejoices. And according to this right here in uh, Ezekiel, you should, should read all of Ezekiel 2, by the way, chapter 35. Ezekiel chapter 35 is about where the Vatican took and divided uh, the nation of Israel into two different states, into a Palestinian state, into an Israeli state, and where the Vatican actually says that they did it with the intention to take both of them. We are, we are coming to a place, though, to where the two witnesses are about to arrive. There's not going to be... This was on December 17th, 2015. Somewhere between 2015 and 16 seems to be the, the timeline of this major awakening. There be no playing church. It's not going to be, and I guarantee you one thing, most of the Christian world probably won't like them either. Because the Bible says they will be hated by the world, and they will kill them, and they will leave their dead bodies in the street, and they send gifts one to another while their dead bodies are laying in the street. In fact, that's when God destroys Rome is why their dead bodies are laying in the street. Ezekiel 35, and I'll share that with Second you. Second 9-11. You see that for yourself. Because Ezekiel it's going to be a mistake. Ezekiel 35 is when that destruction... 
It's going to be purposely trying to be mistaken for the fifth trumpet because the fifth and the sixth are similar with that earthquake. Comes. Uh, or when they, or let me put it this way. Ezekiel 35 tells us exactly when God is going to destroy, uh, when God will actually destroy Rome. You might think, well, that's pretty wild, brother. I didn't, I didn't know we knew when this was going to happen. Sure we do. Back on June 17th of 2018, I was talking about the Star Trek system, the stars that are on a track. I went to the movie once and I recorded that, I can't remember the name of the movie, but something about going up in outer space, and then they showed three different clips of the rocket ship heading over the Star Trek system on, I don't know, it kind of looked like on triangles. And it showed it one clip for about seven seconds, three seconds, and five seconds, three different times. They never said anything about it, but they just showed it. This is happening right now. Two additional missiles fired in addition to the attack by Iran, of which they claimed that symbolic attack yesterday on a U.S. Air Force, two U.S. bases, of which Donald Trump just said days ago that he would counteract any strike disproportionately if he even thought that U.S. troops or installations were being targeted in any way. So I said to you, Donald Trump, hey, ain't that after cool giving how a very epic speech today, your move, your move, Mr. Ain't that cool how... Um how Christopher Green put my name up here as Robin Robin's Hood the Star Trek cuz he got big rich up here on his on his the le on the ledge that was nice of him right plus showing us that Star Trek system Mr. president and again nothing has changed in this re region at all two rockets to the attack by Iran of which they claimed that symbolic attack Yesterday on a U.S. Air Force Two U.S. bases, of which Donald Trump just said days ago that he would like what the hell could that any possibly be? Disproportionately, like attack yesterday on a U.S. Air Force Two U.S. base. It's going over these lights. And then it does the flicker. These chemtrail looking things here are, are stationary. They're not even moving. Pieces of which Donald Trump just said days ago. This this whole outline is just still. It, it's just stiff. That he would counteract. This whole cloud thing isn't even. It's one solid piece. And it's not waving or flickering or anything. Donald Trump just said days ago that he would counteract any strike disproportionately if he even counteract any strike disproportionately. Air Force 